Hopefully, by now, you have learned that computers store their data information in chunks of bits called words. These words can be stored in various places such as the RAM, registers, or hard drive. In this lecture, we will learn more about how we store state information in these registers. Each register in a computer is composed of a set of smaller storage units called flip-flops. Each flip-flop stores one bit. So, in an 8-bit architecture, each register is composed of 8 flip-flops. Let's take a closer look at the structure of the individual flip-flops. Each flip-flop has two types of inputs. The first type is the clock input. The clock input is critical because we want all of our storage components to update at the same time. Consequently, each flip-flop is designed to update once per clock cycle. The flip-flops in this example are called positive edge or rising edge triggered flip-flops. So they will all update whenever the clock signal rises from a low voltage to a high voltage. Certain components that are controlled by the clock, like flip-flops and registers, are called synchronous components. The second type of input is called the data input. This input determines how the state of each flip-flop updates every clock edge. The flip-flops in this example are called D flip-flops. If the input to a D flip-flop is zero during the rising edge of the clock, then the flip-flop will store zero until the next rising edge. If the input to a flip-flop is a one during the rising edge of the clock, then the flip-flop will store a one until the next rising edge. We can recall the value that is stored in each flip-flop at any time from the output of the flip-flop. Keep in mind though, we can change what is stored in the flip-flop only during the rising edge of the clock. But we can read the value that is stored in the flip-flop at any time. As we said earlier, we can construct an 8-bit register out of 8 flip-flops. I'm going to ask you to use your imagination and pretend that we have arranged 8 flip-flops on the screen, but we're only going to show 4 because of space limitations. To create the 8-bit flip-flop, we need to show the different types of connections that the registers will have. First, all the flip-flops will share a common clock signal. Second, each of the flip-flops will receive a separate data input. This data input configuration is called a parallel load design. Finally, each of the flip-flops will contribute one data output to the 8-bit register. When we draw the final 8-bit register, we typically do not draw all the internal flip-flops. And we also rearrange the inputs and outputs to facilitate reading. So, in this lecture, I demonstrated the basic functionality of flip-flops, and I demonstrated how we can combine flip-flops to create a register. This process of abstracting the structure of smaller components to create larger components is called modular design. Modular design is one of the most important concepts in computer engineering. You should always look for opportunities to build more complex tools from several smaller, simpler tools.